Hey, and welcome back to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. If you are new here, very warm welcome to you. My name is Heather, and I have been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009, making my show almost 15 years old, which is kind of mind-blowing. This channel is where I put all of my episodes from all of my different podcasts, as well as extra content like this video right here. So today we are talking about Maria de Salinas, Baroness Willoughby de Ersby. She was a notable figure in the Tudor court. She was the mother of Catherine Willoughby, who is, you know, quite famous. And she was at the time primarily recognized for her very close association with Catherine of Aragon, of course, Henry VIII's first wife. So Maria de Salinas was born around 1490 in Spain, and her life journey from the Iberian Peninsula to the bustling courts of England paints a vivid picture of a noblewoman navigating the complex political and social landscapes of early 16th century Europe. As a lady-in-waiting, she was more than just a companion. She was a confidant and a loyal supporter of Catherine. She stood by her side through all of the tumultuous period including Catherine's marriage to Arthur Tudor and then the period where she did not have a husband and she was just kind of waiting to see what was going to happen to her, and then throughout her whole marriage to Henry VIII. Her role extended beyond just court duties and reflected the intricate interplay of personal loyalties and political intrigue that characterized the Tudor period. Maria de Salinas was born into a world where lineage and noble connections dictated one's place in society. She was the daughter of Martín de Salinas, a member of the royal household of Castile, and Josefa González de Salas. This prestigious background placed Maria within the sphere of the Spanish royal family, potentially even a distant relation, though the exact nature of the connection is a subject of historical conjecture. Growing up, in Spain, the Spain of the Reconquista, she was exposed to court life from a young age. She was exposed to lots of different cultures, uh, warfare. She would have had this upbringing that prepared her for her future role in the English court, and her family's status would have provided her with an education befitting a noblewoman. Lessons in etiquette, languages, the arts, crafting her into a sophisticated and cultured member of the aristocracy. Her transition from Spain to England was a journey marked by significant political and cultural shifts. It's believed that she accompanied Catherine of Aragon, the Spanish princess, to England in 1501. This move was not just a personal journey for Maria, but part of a grander political narrative involving these two powerful nations. Well, one, Spain was at the peak of its power, or close to the peak, and then England was you know, coming out of the Wars of the Roses and trying to form these alliances that would give legitimacy to the Tudors. Catherine of Aragon's marriage to Prince Arthur, Prince of Wales, was a union meant to solidify the alliance between England and Spain, and Maria's presence in Catherine's entourage signified her family's importance in the Spanish court and their role in supporting this pivotal and diplomatic marriage. Her arrival in England introduced her to a new realm, a new language, new customs, new climate, challenging her to adapt to the Tudor court's unique dynamics. This transition marked the beginning of Maria's significant role in the Tudor period, intertwining her life with the fate of Catherine of Aragon and the unfolding history of England. In the English court, Maria de Salinas' role as a lady-in-waiting to Catherine of Aragon was multifaceted, would have encompassed duties that ranged from personal assistance to acting as a confidant and advisor. She also would have been uh, like a link back to her Spanish culture, something that was familiar, someone that Catherine could speak to in her own language. Even when the rest of Catherine's initial larger entourage would have left to go back to Spain, her responsibilities likely included overseeing Catherine's daily schedule, managing her correspondence, providing companionship. Maria's position allowed her unique insights into the Queen's personal and political life, especially during Catherine's marriage to Henry VIII. Maria's unwavering loyalty to Catherine was most evident during the Queen's most challenging times, particularly when Henry VIII was trying to annul their marriage. Despite the court's shifting allegiances, Maria remained steadfast in her support, often at personal risk. This loyalty was not just a demonstration of duty, but also a testament to the deep bond that they shared. They'd been together for 25 years at this point reflecting the profound emotional support systems that existed within the female spheres of Tudor courts. 
Her devotion to Catherine was such that even when ordered to leave the Queen's service during the annulment crisis, Maria sought ways to maintain contact and provide support, highlighting the depth of their relationship beyond mere courtly duty. On June 5, 1516, Maria married William Willoughby, the 11th Baron Willoughby de Ersby, a union that significantly elevated her status in English nobility. The marriage brought her into one of England's most influential families and granted her a prominent position within the English aristocracy. The couple resided at Grimsthorpe Castle in Lincolnshire, a magnificent estate that became a symbol of their wealth and status. Her life at Grimsthorpe was marked by the responsibilities of managing a large household and estate, roles that required astute administrative skills. Her marriage also intertwined her life further with the English nobility, fostering relationships that extended her influence beyond the court. She and William had one child, Catherine, who later inherited barony, became, of course, Catherine Willoughby, who married Charles Brandon. Their life at Grimsthorpe was filled with the typical activities of the nobility, including hosting events, managing lands, and participating in local and national politics. Maria's role as Baroness Willoughby de Ayresby thus expanded her influence from the intimate circles of the Queen's chambers to the broader stage of the English noble society, showcasing her adaptability and resilience in navigating the complexities of Tudor England. Maria's involvement within the Tudor politics, though often behind the scenes, was significant because of her close relationship with Catherine of Aragon. Her position as lady-in-waiting provided her with a unique access to the inner workings of the Tudor court, allowing her to witness and at times influence key political events. Maria interacted with influential figures of the time, including Henry and members of his court. Her influence was subtly exercised, often through her counsel to Catherine and her ability to navigate court politics. Maria's political role was particularly evident in her interactions with ambassadors and dignitaries where she often represented Catherine's interests. Additionally, her Spanish heritage and connection to the Castilian court provided her with a unique perspective, which she could leverage in discussions and negotiations. Despite being a woman in a male-dominated political landscape, Maria's proximity to the queen and her understanding of the court dynamics enabled her to play a discreet yet impactful role in the Tudor political arena. The later years of Catherine of Aragon were marked by her tumultuous annulment from Henry, and during this period, Maria de Salinas's loyalty and support for Catherine were unwavering. As Catherine faced isolation, public humiliation, and the annulment of her marriage, Maria stood by her side, offering emotional and moral support, even when it could have perhaps been a threat to Maria herself. It would have tested her resilience and loyalty. Supporting Catherine could have potentially jeopardized her own standing at court. But Maria was a staunch ally. Her devotion was most notably demonstrated in 1536 when Catherine was confined to Kimbleton Castle. When she heard about Catherine's failing health as she was dying, Maria defied the king's orders and made a daring journey to be at her side. This act of loyalty, in the face of considerable personal risk, underscored the depth of her commitment to Catherine. Her presence during Catherine's final days, where supposedly she died in Maria's arms, was a poignant testament to their enduring friendship and the strength of their bond. Maria's actions during this period highlight not only her personal courage, but also the profound impact she had during one of the most critical moments in Tudor history. Following the death of Catherine, Maria de Salinas's life entered a new phase marked by a focus on her family and estate management. She was now a widow herself. She had lost her husband, William, in 1526. And actually, this goes to show even more how strong she was during this period when she defied the king because she did not have the protection of her husband to help her. She took on the full responsibility of managing the substantial Willoughby estates, including Grimsthorpe Castle. Her role as a landowner and manager showcased her capabilities beyond the court as she adeptly handled the complexities of estate administration in a period when such responsibilities were typically male-dominated. Her later years were also characterized by her dedication to her daughter, Catherine Willoughby, who had become an important figure in her own right when she married Charles Brandon and she became Duchess of Suffolk. Maria guided and supported her daughter through these significant life events. Um, when she married Charles Brandon, who was, of course, like the second most influential man in the kingdom, right below Henry, despite the political and religious upheavals at the time, including the Reformation and the Lincolnshire Rising, Maria successfully navigated these challenges 
maintaining control of her estates and ensuring their transition to her daughter. She died in 1539, so only a couple of years after the death of Catherine of Aragon. So she really didn't have that long without Catherine of Aragon. Um, and of course, then her daughter, Catherine Willoughby, went on to become a lady in waiting to Catherine Parr and continue that tradition. So there we go. A little bit about Maria de Salinas. If you have made it to the end of this video and are still listening, I sure would appreciate your press of that like button and subscription to my channel where I post content like this on the regular. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you watching. I know you have a lot of choices within the world of YouTube um, and it's kind of overwhelming sometimes and you chose to spend the last 10 minutes or so with me and I do appreciate that and I hope I made it worth your time. All right, thank you so much. I will talk with you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>